So in this episode, Metal Oda meets the wonderful Emma Ragan Darcy. So uh, welcome. And uh, Ragan is a modern progressive gothic metal solo project from Finland. I know that uh, musicians don't like to be labeled uh, as uh, this or that genre, but we have to put it uh, in a genre. So uh, welcome again. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And that modern progressive gothic metal, I think that's the <laughs> best suitable genre <laughs> that okay. we can come up with. I'm glad. So um, I believe that uh, your uh, debut uh, album, uh, which is released this month, is a very interesting one. Um, one of the most interesting works uh, in the progressive genre this year. I guess, uh, because, you know, when the uh, end of the year uh, approaches, you have very interesting albums uh, coming out. <laughs> so December and November are uh, wonderful months uh, in that sense. So as a singer of Reagan, uh, we see you in the front, but uh, I know that in different kinds of losses, very well-known artists from the metal genre, Uh, gave you support, such as Jonas Ranske from Catatonia and Einar Solberg from Lepris. So uh, let's hear how did you guys uh, get together for this album? How did you uh, connect and put this album together? Okay, so uh, the whole Ryagan project started somewhere in 2019 ish <laughs> and at that point I was just kind of wondering if my poems could be made into music somehow maybe I could have something to give into music scene because uh, I listen to a lot of music myself and music is very important part of my life and also I I have a hobby in singing so so I thought maybe all these things could go together and uh, with the EP I really didn't have much clue about the songwriting or recording or producing process at any point so I contacted a few friends to get the party started so to speak <laughs> and after the EP was made It got a lot of great feedback and then there was kind of this empty space <laughs> to fill, which obviously needed to be filled with more music and logically maybe a full length album. And uh, I really wanted to explore what I have to offer in music. So I didn't want to do things the same that I did with the EP. I always wanted to do something new and then I decided to start with making a list of people <laughs> I would like to at some point of my life make music with <laughs> and then I guess Wonderful. I was stupid enough to just contact them like hey <laughs> this is what I have done so far maybe we could do something with Together. a new album <laughs> and then I, I had some thoughts For the album like you know the basic themes and what kind of um, what kind of music musical things I would like to add in what kind of genres and that sort of thing so I, I had something in mind and I put those out and I guess my thoughts were okay enough because Jonas <laughs> and Hena wanted to join the project. <laughs> yeah, so lovely. And I love the EP, by the way. And uh, I know that you have a released brief, I guess, uh, in March. So, yeah. you know, uh, every time I listen to a new song, I happen to be in my car driving. And I'm like, and I said, Ooh, check this out. Wonderful song. And that was my first, uh, one of the first encounters with your music. And um, I believe that your sound is very original and uh, dark and powerful. You have that uh, versatile voice, uh, which is great. And it's great for metal music, I guess. And uh, you can easily shift uh, from softness to fierceness 
which is uh, pretty much needed in uh, metal music. So uh, the music uh, hits you in the face, kind of. The right <laughs> sound. <laughs> this is something great. Pleases <laughs> me a lot. <laughs> And um, before we move to the album, uh, let's speak about covers too. And I liked it very much uh, as well. Uh, your selections from Sia's uh, Chandelier and uh, Modern Talking's Lonely Tears in Chinatown. These are uh, strange, um, uh, different uh, choices. How did you choose them for your covers? <laughs> well, uh, we had a talk with Demo. Liekkala, the producer on this album and mm -hmm. the one who is in the band right now yeah, as sure. the guitarist. Uh, let's yeah. not forget to mention Temu and Valtteri who are supporting you in Ryagon project. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we, we had a talk with Temu in the midst of the album demo making and mm -hmm. we decided that it it would be fun <laughs> to make a few covers because I had already made sure. the covers one back in 2017 or something. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, then we were like, yeah, let's put out some covers too, <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> this <laughs> that was one, and let's make it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, then we wanted to choose the chandelier, and at first I was like what I, I i can't do this i i mean it's it's like it's sia it's like she's like a <laughs> goddess <laughs> with her belting and all of that kind of stuff but then then i rehearsed and <laughs> <laughs> yeah we dropped it one uh key lower <laughs> from the sia original but okay. still it was pretty yeah. hard but mm -hmm. yeah we can we can do it now but I and like we are it. also getting it to the yeah. live setup, I think. Oh. This, song. yeah, and, <laughs> and uh, I love the heavy uh, uh, version of the song, anyway. Yeah, yeah, and I think the genty guitars uh, work pretty well in mm -hmm. that. <laughs> and you know, um, modern talking is another uh, different, interesting choice because, um, as I told you. Um, I have seen lots of bands uh, singing covers from the Fish Mode, Durand Durand, and uh, various other bands of the 80s, but Modern Talking is an interesting choice. Well, Modern Talking, then again, <laughs> if, if Chandelier was Temu's choice, Modern Talking was my choice, and that's kind Great. of like a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> I listen to it a lot, and I really love the songs because there's always, you know, there's this um, basic voice mm -hmm. vocals and then there is the high-pitched <laughs> awesome yes. falsettos yeah. and that's yeah. they are so fun to sing that i mm -hmm. i love those i love modern talking all together <laughs> so we wanted to choose something out of there but we didn't want to choose anything like mm -hmm. which is uh, super obvious you know like the mm -hmm. biggest biggest yeah. biggest hits ever yeah. so mm -hmm. we chose this one which which is yes. one of my favorites, Lonely Tears in Chinatown. <laughs> Great choice. Because, you know, um, the 80s uh, music is uh, especially very musical, melodic in line. So, yeah. And when you uh, put it uh, in a sort of uh, heavy um, genre or um, with... Um, when you uh, blend it uh, with uh, heavy metal, it becomes uh, very pretty, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think interesting is a good good choice of words. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, uh, let's talk about the uh, uh, Finnish metal scene a bit. Uh, you know, um, metal music is literally pouring <laughs> from your country. Pretty so, much. yeah, <laughs> um, my some of my uh, favorite uh, bands are from Finland too. And good examples are Soul of the Sun, Apolyptica, Nightwish, Morse Principe, Master, Tuarius, Poets of the Fall, which is one of my uh, favorite bands as well. Well, and Erasmus and Morphe is in um, incredible <laughs> number of bands come from. The list goes on and on. <laughs> yeah. And uh, some uh, attribute this to the climate. 
what do you say about that? Because I know that you post a 6 a.m. mood, so this is exactly my mood in the morning. <laughs> to start yeah. today with morning coffee and heavy metal. So uh, it gives me uh, this boost and energy. And uh, what do you think about the heavy metal music um, in Finland in general uh, as a mood, as a boost? Well, I think, yeah, it has something to do with the climate because we have the long winters and a lot of darkness and, you know, most of the year is actually shit. <laughs> and then we just go on with a few months of summer and everybody who says that winter is their favorite season are lying, <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it, it's some kind of a coping mechanism probably some yeah. people do art some people do music some people are mm -hmm. just mad at everybody all the time <laughs> so we are a weird bunch you <laughs> kind of uh, turn to your uh, selves and uh, to your internal worlds to yeah it, yeah uh, yes the long yeah and i think uh, the 6 a.m. songs I've been putting on Instagram. Those are just takes on what I listen to, what what is in my head that yeah. morning. Because exactly. every time I wake up, there is uh -huh. some song playing on the background <laughs> of my head. And sometimes I don't even recognize what the song is. And I have to think about like, yeah, where have I heard this one? What song is this? I don't even know. <laughs> And then when I look up the lyrics or something, then then I find the song and link it up. <laughs> or maybe it's something I have listened to recently. But yeah, mostly those are the songs that are playing in my head when I wake up. <laughs> this, is, this is exactly what happens to me. You uh, get out of bed and you have a song playing in your yeah. <laughs> head and you want to listen to it immediately. So. Um, I know that uh, some of the major influences in your music are Annika van Heersbergen and uh, Steven Wilson. And Steven Wilson is also one of my uh, favorite artists uh, in the genre. And um, I pretty much like all of his projects, but his solo work and his Blackfield project are uh, very much uh, my, my favorites. How would you describe this uh, poppy effect in Ryagan? Well, I think it, it comes somewhere from the subconscious because uh, I, I listen to so much different genres of music. Like mm -hmm. I, I listen to, well, pretty much everything, you know, from very very basic pop to like uh, super extreme metal kind of <laughs> stuff so so it's kind of everything from there blends somewhere in my head and then when it comes out to our own music uh there are obvious poppy things that just seem to fit there and sound yeah, good exactly. and that that makes the song to be more interesting i think yeah. you know so, some people would think that adding pop effects would make the song boring because it would add more mainstream to it you know but i think it adds interest to the song if you exactly. have something unconventional but then there is something you can hook up to <laughs> exactly and you know, uh, this year um, I have selected uh, some of the albums uh, which caught my attention. So uh, a lot of albums uh, share the common uh, fact. Uh, they have this thread of the poppy sound of the 80s. And um, let's come uh, to your music and to your uh, video clips. And uh, for the viewers of uh, Metal Oda, let me say that uh, Ryagan's uh, video clips are beautiful, very interesting, and you should watch them. And let's start with uh, Breath, uh, Sight, and Home. Home is my one of my favorite videos. <laughs> you know why? It's all uh, this um, 
Seren um, Ryogan and then the blood dripping from the branches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very much like a, a porcelain doll and uh, sitting uh, calmly. And uh, there's that uh, huge darkness and <laughs> lots of blood. Uh, so, um, how was the process of uh, recording the videos? Um, I guess it was a lot of fun because uh, I have seen uh, in other videos as well with the costumes, with witchy costumes and uh, fires and nature and so forth. So how was yeah. this process? Uh, well, every every single one of the videos have been very <laughs> fun to make <laughs> there has not been a dull moment in there they have all made in like one or two days mm -hmm. so it has been pretty small scale production because we wanted to keep it that way yeah. and um, actually I think when we filmed Breath it took like maybe 10 hours or so and it was all done <laughs> so uh, I think uh, the visual part is very important mm -hmm. with Ryogen also adding to the music somehow so mm -hmm. it, it's like you can li only listen to the music that's fine too but it becomes more interesting when you add these visuals to it okay. and that's why I really wanted to make it some effort to the videos too because mm -hmm. they need to complement the song and give more to the story and they yeah. open up the story a little bit from some perspective of course the stories can be interpreted in many ways but mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. some form of it <laughs> sure of course, and uh, when you watch a video or read a poem or uh, read a book, uh, it depends on, upon your imagination and what uh, you get from it. It's very personal yeah. in that sense. Well, uh, let's come to your poetry a bit. I love um, the verses, the uh, lyrics of Ryogan. For example, uh, the breath was uh, one opening song for my show, Death and Metal. So I chose okay. to open, open the show with breath because it's about the last breath, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Breathe towards the end and the heartbeat stops. And yeah. um, the name of the album, uh, please tell me a little bit more about the name of the album. It's, it's about the things we lose on the journey of life, I guess. Uh, yeah. I understood it well. So please um, tell me more about the name of the album. Yeah. Uh, when, when we had all the, pretty much all the demos together for the album, and I knew almost all of the lyrics there are going to be, I was like, I was thinking, is there a theme? in this somehow mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. lyrically is there a lyric theme in these songs and then when I thought about it further I was like yeah actually maybe it's like different kinds of losses every song is a different kind of loss it tells a story about a loss of something and that's also yeah. how the songs are named on the album because there are only one word and that's what the story is about it's loss of song title, <laughs> title. So that kind of also adds some depth to the lyrics I think great great and uh, you know what I like about uh, metal music is that uh, you don't have uh, silly verses or <laughs> silly uh, lyrics uh, it's yeah. always a lot of depth a lot of uh, literature a lot of meaning uh, in the words, yeah. in the lyrics of metal music. And uh, I am also very fond of uh, poetry and uh, literature. And uh, I also like the poems by Till Lindemann. <laughs> and uh, he has uh, this uh, wonderful book, about 100 poems, uh, I guess. Yeah. And, um, 
I have uh, seen uh, all of your poems in your website, but do you have a book uh, published for your poems? No, at, at the moment, I no, hope you will, but you will have one. Uh, we, we've been thinking about it and mm -hmm. we have been thinking maybe there could be some, like if, if we are gonna put a vinyl out of mm -hmm. different kinds of losses, maybe there could be a special edition with some kind of a poetry book. book or something maybe. like that. Or maybe we could just put the poetry book out by yeah. itself. Not sure, but yeah, there's lots of That's stuff really and lots of stuff that could be published too in, in written form, like in physical form too, uh -huh. yeah. Lovely. And, um, you know, my uh, favorite poets are Nazım Hikmet, uh, Turkish poet, Pablo Neruda, Shakespeare and Machado. And who are your favorite poets? Uh, I was thinking about, I, I was sure <laughs> this question is going to come up. And I, <laughs> now I was prepared because last time someone asked me this, I wasn't prepared. And I was like, uh oh. <laughs> not sure what I'm going to pick. It's like, you know, w when some question comes like out of the blue, then you have like 17,000 things on your head and then you can't think of anything. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to pick uh, two Finnish poets, uh, mm -hmm. one of them being A.W. Uriana, who does a lot of like... Um, esoteric uh, stuff mm -hmm. and research and also he has all kinds of sci-fi things and mm -hmm. a lot of uh, study of religion and self-reflection and that kind of soul-searching stuff he he has a lot of works and also I am very fond of his work with his band CMX mm -hmm. and he does all the lyrics and uh, most of the music for them. So that has been like one of my favorite projects from all time. And it has also formed very much of me, of what I write and what I do in music. So Great. the first place goes to him. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. And uh, second place I, I would give to Maria Leinonen. Mm -hmm. And she is uh, actually Christian religious writer which mm -hmm. someone would say that probably I wouldn't pick <laughs> here <laughs> but actually I have I have read all of her poems multiple times and I think she does uh, she has a very great form in her poems mm -hmm. they are very modern but uh, you know and also she also does this kind of self-reflection a lot mm -hmm. and you know even though there are some religious things present sometimes it's also obvious but then it still gives something to you even though you can just pass those sort it, of it, spiritual yeah. and uh, christian at the same time I guess. Yeah, yeah yeah i think so and also she she words out feelings pretty greatly i think and I that's that that's something i have had trouble <laughs> at some points of my life <laughs> so that's that's something i have also learned <laughs> from her <laughs> and uh, in your poetry you have um, uh, lots of uh, descriptions and um, either it is spiritual or nature uh, from nature and it's very visual yeah That's what i noticed from your poetry yeah and usually i i kind of have some kind of visual of things when mm -hmm. I write mm -hmm. and that's that's also why the visual things in Ryogan and with the music are so important because I have something yeah, already in my head and I want to get it out <laughs> first in the form of writing then we add the music and then we add the visual presentation and you to want to of course uh, show it to the world uh, what you uh, think 
in yes. writing this music or composing that um, uh, music or writing this poem. And so some verses uh, from your poetry and it's from home. See the world below as I am falling down like sand through the hourglass. It's very visual as well. Yeah. I like it very much. Yeah, and it's uh, at first it was like, uh, at first actually, <laughs> this lyric was a redo of another lyric I have written a few years back, which was supposed to go into another song to another project, which never happened. And then I, I was refused to use that song or lyric anywhere. So I, mm -hmm. I needed to, this was kind of like out of spite thing also that I, <laughs> I remade the story here differently <laughs> because I wanted to get it out. And then this was a very new part to it. And then it kind of became the most important part and most visual yeah. part. And it, it carries most the most striking part of the song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. And other poetry, other um, expressions I like, which one is the dislocated heart, like a uh, dislocated uh, part of your body. And yeah, <laughs> you kind of think about it. How can a heart be dislocated in that? Yeah, sense? and you know, dislocated is like it's it's still attached, but it's somehow in the yeah. wrong place. In the wrong place, it hurts. It hurts, yeah. And uh, lots of uh, mirror effects in your poetry. I have noticed two uh, verses about mirrors and bathtubs and lots of blood. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah th those scenes come to me often. <laughs> I love it. Uh, great. And... Um, Another one I like is my skin is gray like the days all welded together. You know, the welding material is also uh, gray and you weld it. The days are welded and they are also gray and the binding material is also gray and you have lots of <laughs> gray. Winter yeah, yeah. Days. And that's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. that, that's how the winter seems somehow Never and, <laughs> and every day is just dark and gray and you don't know if it's monday or wednesday <laughs> or what month or is it <laughs> may already no it's not it's still dark <laughs> so it's, still dark. It, it's yeah that, that's that poem is about yeah it. yeah and uh, in the middle of uh, all that gray grayness and you have the dramatic color of red <laughs> which is the blood yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love it. Um, <laughs> and uh, as um, if we, we put uh, aside all the uh, visual elements, and there is a lot of pain and agony as well in the lyrics. Uh, that's what I noticed. I love it. Let's come to the subject of uh, women in metal. <laughs> Which is a subject uh, which can be, um, which we can talk about uh, for hours and hours, but uh, let's, yeah. Um, one thing I noticed uh, in um, metal music is that we have lots of women in the symphonic metal genre, but uh, far less in uh, the progressive genre. And uh, I know that Annika is one of the uh, leading figures uh, in the genre. And uh, what do you think the reason behind uh, there are so many uh, women in symphonic metal and not much in your genre? <laughs> well, th this is kind of a this is kind of a tough question because you of the you have the word things like now now you can easily offend someone <laughs> and you don't mean to do it <laughs> but i i was thinking about it, this question beforehand and i think it's just that many women in many countries including finland if if you want to learn singing for mm -hmm. example you go to some kind of 
pop jazz uh, school or some kind of classes which you can just take in once a month or once every few weeks and there you will be taught some songs that mm. are in the typical female range yeah. and you know yes. like then then the history repeats itself in a way <laughs> and then when I thought about the progressive metal scene there mm -hmm. is so much more versatility needed exactly. kind of in in the vocal mm -hmm. things okay there are many male singers who only do clean vocals and that kind of stuff and very you know uh very clean pitched things mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. very accurate stuff but also now especially this modern progressive metal uh there are a lot of singers who can do so many different techniques and so many different exactly. things and the exactly. melody jumps are insane somehow exactly. and i don't know if it's the maybe women are taught that you need to sing in this exact way mm -hmm. and it's hard to get out of the box somehow mm -hmm. uh, maybe, it might be hard to yeah learn like growls or shouts or that kind of thing because it's it's maybe people think it's it's a boy's thing <laughs> <laughs> maybe you know it's a prejudice uh, that uh, must be uh, yeah yeah overcome and um i have uh, noticed in your singing uh, lots of screams too and uh, yeah it blends very well uh, with the music and I just love it. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, and I think uh, I think it's also kind of about the mm -hmm. musicianship thing somehow uh, that uh, the progressive genre draws people who kind of want to emerge into more deeply into the music and into the theoretical stuff too and somehow those are mostly men I, i'm not sure why but maybe that yeah. kind of maybe it gives that kind of uh nerd club ish <laughs> kind of kind of feel to it and then mm -hmm. it doesn't draw that many women in i don't know why yeah. <laughs> But that, that's also something I have thought about. Maybe maybe that has something to do with it. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, uh, Anika was uh, here in Istanbul last year. And this year, Swallow the Sun uh, has come to Istanbul for a concert. And um, are we supposed to see Ryogun here in Istanbul sometime? <laughs> well, <laughs> I hope so. So uh, just last weekend, uh, we had our first live rehearsals so mm -hmm. we have the live set up in game now <laughs> and we are trying to get as many gigs to next year as possible yeah so not sure about europe yet That's we are starting national <laughs> and then let's see how things let's go if goes. we get yeah because you know if if, if we are going to get to europe from here we need to have a, a few more european shows there yeah. so we we just can't afford to fly into one place and come back here because from finland it's such a sure. long journey to everywhere because we are on the <laughs> edge of nowhere <laughs> <laughs> so you know you you have to have a, like a bigger plan there yeah i see but we are working on the plan yeah <laughs> Good. Wonderful. So one question I ask everybody I interview. I love this question. Describe what music means to you in one word. And I am very thankful that I got this question beforehand because otherwise we would be here <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> too. <laughs> but I chose the word continuity. Hmm. Interesting. That makes uh, lots of sense uh, to me. It's a word um, 
on which uh, I must think further. Because, you know, uh, when I uh, think now about continuity, I uh, remember that uh, music has been in my life, I'm speaking for myself, all my life, from childhood, babyhood, until now. So it makes lots of sense. True, and it, it, it also connects things and yeah. also connects people and connects nationalities and genders and all kind of stuff. And it, it gives somehow, it, it gives a fluent transition to everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great answer. And uh, anything you would like to add or say to your fans, uh, to um, fans who are viewing this interview on YouTube? Well, of course, firstly, thank you to everyone who has pressed play or clicked follow or done anything that helps us. And also we have been kind of baffled about all the positive attention this got because I, I'm always like, well, every time we have released anything, I have been like, okay, well, this is ready now and I will give it to the world. And after that, nothing matters really, <laughs> because I'm happy with the products. Everything else is just opinions. Maybe it's only my mom who listens to it, but fine. <laughs> Maybe she likes it. Hope so. Yeah. <laughs> but That's really, not... it's been like yeah. uh, there has been so many comments and so many reviews for the album and that, that those have also been great and I'm like maybe maybe we got something here <laughs> maybe we did something right <laughs> you, you definitely did something yeah uh, and thank you so much for everyone you know who has said it out loud definitely you did something great <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure you. about it <laughs> Thank you. And um, thank you for your time. Thank you for being my guest here uh, tonight uh, at Metal Oda. So uh, a last uh, word for those who are watching. And uh, dear friends of uh, Metal Oda, we have come to the end of another episode. And in the next episode, Metal Oda is going to meet a wonderful Turkish rock artist here. And until then, please do not forget to subscribe to Metal Oda YouTube channel and follow Metal Oda on Instagram and Twitter. And listen to my live broadcasts and podcasts on Clubhouse, read my music and art reviews. And please do not forget to follow Ryogen on the Instagram and hear her music if you haven't already and listen to her on the Spotify and watch her videos on YouTube. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.